In the global financial crisis, China's stimulus package, or the so-called bamboo shoots rather than green shoots, made a big impact to the global economy, particularly in the Asia Pacific and particularly to Latin America. Two nations that really benefited from China's growth have been Australia and Brazil, two great southern lands. Both the great southern lands have been very much beneficial, benefited from China's growth, but these two nations don't know much about each other historically. One nation started as a jail, a public private sector partnership with three different classes, the convicts or the jailed, the jailers and the indigenous societies. Despite its humble beginnings, this society actually prospered economically through wheat, through a wool boom and through a gold rush or two. But for many years it had an unusual, perhaps uh, uh, frustrated, protected view of its neighbourhood. It was protected from Asia and saw Asia as something it wanted to defend itself against rather than somewhere to engage with. It took a trade union leader and Rhodes Scholar who went to Oxford University, Bob Hawke, to change Australia's history and to change its future. Bob Hawke, when he became Prime Minister in 1983, flooded the dollar, reduced tariffs, made changes to the labour market and to financial markets with his very energetic and later Prime Minister, Paul Keating. He brought trade unions and businesses together. He engaged more with China following on his predecessor, Gough Whitlam. And as a result, China, India, ASEAN, the rest of Asia, is now very much part of Australia's destiny. The other country, Brazil, had a very different history. It didn't, it didn't start under the burden of being a jail, of being a convict colony, but it started under the burden of slavery. Like Australia, it had massive resources. Like Australia, it relied on immigration and human capital for its prosperity. Like Australia, it had its own issues with its own indigenous population. With Brazil, the economic problems were actually quite different than Australia's. Brazil had much bigger problems than Australia in terms of having hyperinflation, in terms of having political instability, terrible fiscal issues and threats to democracies with dictatorship. But Brazil, like Australia, has also put its past behind it. It took a very different trade union leader, Lula, who wasn't a Rhodes Scholar, who didn't go to, uh, to Oxford University like Bob Hawke, but who nevertheless changed Brazil for the better. Under Lula's leadership, Brazil not only prospered in terms of economic growth, in terms of fiscal policy, monetary policy, and also in terms of its labour market. Brazil, which once had hyperinflation, which once had terrible social dislocation, actually saw during the global financial crisis a 7.5% economic growth rate and 4.5% the following year. Its closer trade ties with the rest of the world, particularly China, has meant that Brazil has prospered economically, but Lula also focused on investing in human capital and has added 49 million people to Brazil's middle class. In fact, the exchange rate is now so strong in Brazil, the real, that one of my hostesses in Rio told me that her maid took her holidays in Buenos Aires next door. And I wrote about this in my project, Don't Buy From Me, Argentina. Now, Brazil and Australia, we don't know much about each other. Australians think of Brazil as sand, soccer and samba. The most famous Brazilian, Pelé, the great footballer, came to Adelaide and got the biggest crowd since the Beatles. But apart from uh, Pelé, Australia generally doesn't know much about Brazil. This is now changing due to education, climate change and sport uh, and indeed the arts. We now have 16,000 Brazilians on our campuses here in, in Australia at Hev, Colombia and Chile from Latin America. Increasingly, the University of New South Wales is doing more work with Brazilian universities. We're also finding that climate change is making a difference. Brazil has a large ethanol industry, it has a large green architecture industry as well, and Australia is increasingly doing more for climate change in the Brazilian mines and with infrastructure, as both countries want to put green back into the green and gold. Finally, sport is very important to Brazilians and Australians and indeed to the world. We're finding the focus after the London Olympics as it moves on to Rio, there'll be more focus on sport 
and indeed art and recreation in Brazil. Brazil will be hosting the Rio Olympics and before that the World Cup and we know how important football or soccer is to Brazil. Brazil has a great arts community, a great culture. Brazilians don't believe there's a dichotomy between art and sport. They love Pelé and Garincha and Socrates and Ronaldo just as much as, as they love bossa nova music and their great artists and great musicians. Brazil's unique multicultural community has been something to aspire to. The great Australian historian John Hurst said that by 2030, through immigration, through intermarriage, Australia would be a beautiful people. Well, Brazil is already a beautiful people. It has many different races working together to provide a unique culture and a, a unique global brand for the world. Brazil is not only a country of beautiful people, but increasingly it's become more economically and dip diplomatically strong in Asia, particularly with China. Brazil and Australia will play a very important role in China in the future and in Asia and ultimately on the world stage. So enjoy the rise of Brazil and make sure that you get to Rio for the Olympics and increasingly whether you live in Beijing or in Brisbane, you'll find that Brazil will touch you even more.